Yeah, you know, I wish you could just move your this, your um, email list up a notch to the actual decision makers. Then maybe we could change the world. Well, they're all bought off. You're not you're not going right. to get to them. They're not going to get to them, right? Let's move. Back and what's going to happen to the, ultimately? To the, uh, and pours for a second, Bob. S and P yeah. has already threatened that if we don't make some serious cuts by November, they're going to do an additional downgrade of our uh, our national credit. Correct. Correct. Okay, so what would uh, another a further reduction of our credit mean? I would mean we pay a lot more interest as a country on the debt that we have. Okay, so, mm-hmm. and, so the, so the probably portion, the debt portion look, of our federal budget would skyrocket. Yes, uh, it's with the with the the one that they've just done. I figure it's about three hundred billion dollars more in interest. They do another so one that, at six hundred. Who, who collects that wow. interest? Who collects the interest? Um, it all depends on who's holding the paper, and probably the Federal Reserve, which in turn recycle it, recycles it to, w- into payoffs for the banks that own the Fed. And after there, they've been slurping at the, the trough. Uh, the remainder goes to the U.S. Treasury. It's sort of like a circular thing. What do you make of this pl- uh, the, the claimed plan that would kick in massive cuts to Medicaid and, and the uh, Pentagon. Is that something that could really happen? Medicare, I'm saying, I'm sorry. Well, Medicare and Social Security are going to be cut. Uh, the cut in the military-industrial con- complex will be minuscule. Okay. And funds that are cut from Medicare and Social Security will be funneled well, how, into how, other, how, other endeavors, but mostly... How could defense be cut? Be not be cut the same amount when this this new stupid thing they just passed in the same uh, breath as the balanced budget amendment. If they don't find all the cuts, there's a trigger that gets pulled, and yeah. it's an automatic cut in defense. Supposedly. Yeah, but that they'll avoid that. They'll find a way to avoid because it because they're getting paid off. They'll find a way to take it out of the people as they always do. Yeah. That's right. Uh, you about, know, we've what lost. The, what about the Congress, Bob? Actually supposedly investigating now Standard & Poor's for doing, I guess, what any sane person would think is their job. Smoke and mirrors. Yeah. Nothing will come of that. Nothing will come of it. It's just like the Securities Exchange Commission, a whistleblower, last week said that Mary Shapiro, who's running that agency, she had all the records destroyed from 1992 onward. Are you kidding? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, they've been destroyed, the Madoff stuff, everything. And the reason why is there's no evidence that they work in conjunction with the large brokerage firms keeping all these people out of jail. Wow. I mean, the whole thing stinks. And we have front-running on every single trade that goes through the New York Stock Exchange, and they, they call it flash trading to avoid the fact that it's front-running, which is illegal. Right. Right. The naked shorting is legion. And I have a company that I know right now that it's happening to, and it's being investigated supposedly by the SEC. And if they don't come up with some re- results shortly, uh, we're going to have the shareholders and the management file a class action lawsuit against the Securities Exchange Commission. Wow, that would be cool. Well, it needs to be done not just in the U.S. I know it exists. Naked shorting is endemic in Canada as well because I'm involved in well, Canada's Ohio. actually cleaned their act up. They have cleaned it and, up now. Yeah, and it, it doesn't really go on to any great extent. Right. Uh, there's always people who are going to cheat and try to get away with it. It's the United States. That's where the problem is okay. because they allow offshore entities to short stocks, and they never see whether there's collateralization or not because those entities are not under the control of the Securities Exchange Commission. Why is it now, so how you find out, let me tell you, I, I spent almost 30 years in that industry. Mm-hmm. I own my own firm. I was a professional trader for 25 years. Let me tell you how they do it. Uh, they want a naked short. Uh, they're a hedge fund, and they're in Zurich. they naked short. They don't have to put up the collateral. But when they do the orders, they'll go, let's say it's 100,000 shares. They'll go put orders through 10 different wholesalers. Right. To sell for them as anonymous, correct? Well, they know who they are. They have to know their their right, client. When it shows up on Kitco or wherever, it always reads out as anonymous or stock. That's out. right. And so they go through these different houses. 
And it's so simple to find out who's doing it because all you have to do is go to the trader, this is the wholesaler, and say, how about that order for 10,000 shares? Now say that is a legitimate order from one of our clients. Good. Who is the client? And they have to divulge it. And that's how you can back into what they're doing. It's called forensic accounting, if you may. It's simple. And then you'll find if you go to every one of the wholesalers, let's say there's 10 of them, and there could be 30 of them making market in that particular stock. And you go to them, and you go to each one of them, and who is the client? You're going to find out that the client is all the same person over there in Zurich. Wow. And so what has to happen, the SEC has to say to the people in Zurich, we know what you're doing, stop it and cover your shorts. If you don't do that, we're going to bring action against you, which will mean you'll no longer be able to trade in the United States. Is this a mechanism, this whole naked short selling thing, is that a way to, for the powers that be, let's say, to take down companies that they just don't like? Absolutely. Okay. And they've done it to thousands since 1980 when this thing started. So it's another way to accumulate the wealth into the hands of a few. That's right. Total control over everything. Everything becomes a monopoly. Uh, Bank of America is going to go under. Oh, no, uh, they're, going bought, they're going to be bought out by Rockefeller's Morgan Chase empire. That's what I heard last night. Okay, I've been predicting their demise for three years. Okay. Not putting a time on it. They were bailed out last July. Right. Not this year, the year before. And yes, J.P. Morgan Chase will absorb them. And uh, that is part of the process of doing away with banks in America. Ultimately, we will be left One with bank. a nationalized banking yep. system bank. of which there will be a half a dozen banks and that will be the end of it. Right, and a half a dozen shareholders like Rockefeller. and That's right. Yep. Wow. And yeah, so what people headed. should do who have wealth is go to another country, get legal residence, move all your money out of the United States, spend the allotted time in that country, which is usually five years, and become the citizen of another country and reject your, uh, your um, status as a citizen of the United States. Well, Otherwise, you know, they can go after you forever. Well, they're all, obviously, you're gonna, when you do that, you'd be giving up all your Social Security benefits, too. No, you're not. When you change your citizenship, you can still be Absolutely paid. not. Absolutely not. There's all kinds of Mexicans who worked in the Bracero program yeah. during the 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s. Many of them went back to Guadalajara or wherever they came from, and they're collecting Social Security. The check comes every month. They, and they were never U.S. citizens. No, but they worked and they paid their uh, paid their F FICA. Goodness, okay. Well, no, thought, you can collect that. I thought the minute you renounced your citizenship, you would renounce all benefits, including no. those that you're due to you, like Social Security. But who cares? Huh. It's a pittance anyway. And it's, pro and it's probably going to be going to be gone soon anyway, as you've been pointing out. For See, the only people who can really escape yeah. are people with money to invest in a business, or invest in an existing business, or people who are independently wealthy. What's wealth? Um, anything over $5 million. And they can leave any time they want. Or if you're retired, it's easy to leave. Well, there, I don't it's think the younger too, people who are stuck. I don't think there's too many people listening to this show who have $5 million sitting around to, to take off. This is Cumberland Mills Free Radio, 88.1 FM, giving parts of Westbrook a different voice.